Welcome to another teardown video. This time it's another Philips product. A GM6025. So this is actually also a millivolt meter. But this time it's a little bit more interesting when it comes to frequency range. So 100 kilohertz to 800 megahertz? Really? How did they do that? This one is designed in 1961. And there's a calibration output here. And it's there's a variable adjustment for the calibration. So, and here we have a zero millivolt calibration. That is a little bit interesting as well. So that already from this, I am guessing there is a diode and then you're amplifying the voltage after the diode. Why would you want to zero millivolt it? And then I guess this one is the on off switch. <laughs> you're gonna love this one. So this is the probe. I think just by the size of this really, really ugly probe compared to day, the standards we got today. But <laughs> I would expect there is a diode and a tube or a transistor or some sort of an amplifier circuit in here. And then you get DC through the cable. Maybe this is a multi-cable. We don't know yet. I'm going to look through this. And also, how do you... How do you connect to this? There is a missing, maybe there is a missing part of this uh, calibration. I would, I would expect the probe to fit in here somehow. I don't know anything about that yet. And this will be the on indicator. It is really, look at my hand here, how big it is. It is huge, but it's, and it's heavy, really, really heavy. And there's a really nice holder here for the probe. I should, of course, weigh this thing. And look at the bottom. Here's the type. Oh, should we just... Ooh, be careful. So leather handle. Look at that. So this is the type number. That is a problem. What kind of mains connector is that? Hmm, I don't got that. 220. Well, that's actually pretty cool. So this is how it works. You could, of course, mount this wrong. Ooh, they didn't see that coming, did they? Okay, so this is how it is. So, oh, that was sloppy, sloppy. So you just lift this up and put it to 245. But it was for 220, so. I'll put it for 220 and then, then I will just adjust my input to 220 and then we'll see what happens. So this is the moment I've been waiting for. I think we got about 224. Okay, great. Let's try. Uh, what? Oh yeah, okay. Sorry about that. Embarrassing. Okay, let's try again. Yep. And there's light. So, 30 watts. That is all right. Ooh. And I hear some 
I hear some wee. I don't know if you can hear this. Okay. I'll try to connect some input. No lock whatsoever in no of the none of the ranges. I was a little bit see? I got something. It's like I think this is reading the something from outer space. It's not Oh yeah, see? It is responding to input. But not really. And this is in the millivolts range. I got one volt of input and it's just not alive at all. So now I will try and measure if there's anything out of the cal output. Just to see if there's a little bit of life left in this box. This is a little bit odd. Okay, we got output. But look at that. One kilohertz of output. Right? And this unit is not even able to measure one kilohertz. So what is the idea about the one kilohertz? Hmm, that is weird. But anyway, the thing is not working. So I want to start looking inside the probe. But first we need to unplug the mains. And this is exactly what I thought we would find. I did not loosen these two screws. But look up here. Here is the diode. So yeah. There is a diode and then a resistor. Wouldn't you expect a capacitor or something? Maybe there's a capacitor in here. But that is it. And I'm a little bit worried about those were actually loose. So this is the what the cathode point of the diode. So, of course, if this is not connected, nothing is going to happen, right? This needs to generate a DC voltage that goes through this coax. I was hoping for a little tiny tube or some fantastic amplifier out here. Due to this size, it could have been. But I'm still looking for the capacitor. Maybe I will try and open some more. I found it. See, there's a ceramic disc capacitor in here. So it's soldered on the probe part. And then it's just connected by kind of random lock in here. And also, how do you adjust this? I don't really like that. What makes this? Hmm, that is really, really strange. So, what the, is the idea? If I, if I screw this, I'm gonna break the diode, right? I guess the diode. Is it soldered in here or something? I'll try to measure if this diode is working. Look at the details here. There was this little... tiny little knot here that was on the back side. So that means... That means when you screw this, oh, you tighten the the grip around the diode. Mm -hmm. But the diode beeps out to be all right. 
I think somebody just didn't assemble this correct. This can't be right. So now I assembled this correctly. Everything is now up here and tight. I just cut a tiny little piece of that diode. And then it's working. Also, I took out this capacitor so we can see how they made that one. Well, well, it seems like I can't get this to work, sort of. It is very odd. I'm playing with different frequencies and it's like there's no way to get a good solid okay now i got something right so if i go to the see if i give it more and more and more it seems to be working but it's it's really really not accurate in any way and if i change the frequency up and down it also goes absolutely crazy and it's it's working a little bit at uh, 100 megahertz, uh, like this is 100 megahertz, but if I go to 10 megahertz, well, and it's only in this range where I get a little bit of something that is working. If I take any of the other ranges, hmm. I don't get anything. So it's just completely defect in the analog circuit. And this range seems to be working a little bit. Okay, let's try and give it 20 millivolts. Ooh, yeah, see? So we got some of the ranges that's working. So this could also just be a mechanical failure. But I think I've been playing enough with this so far. Uh, I want to open it and see what what we got. I am actually a little bit in doubt of how much I'm going to make a fool out of myself. Did I do this right? See all the screws? Some are connected to the back and some are not. And then I took these out so that I can Seems like... <coughs> it seems like we are in, somehow. What is all that? That is trimming of different levels. Somebody was real nice and put in some labels. And look at that. This baby is full of tubes isn't that just wonderful oh now i see so if you remove all the other screws maybe maybe we can take out the entire frame maybe i don't know really it's also looking like something down there, so what is the secret behind this case? Could be fun to see what's inside this one. But this is really, really 60s. Ooh, only tubes. We're not going to find a single transistor in here, I guess. <laughs> I think I figured this out by loosening those two screws this one comes out and that will be 
all the tubes in the right side. Aha! Uh -huh. And here in the bottom, it was the same trick. There's a little bit of a problem with a ground wire here. There was also a screw that I didn't really figure out what I did wrong. But there was a screw here and it's not going through the hole. So I unscrewed this one and then this spacer fell to the floor. So it was in here somehow. Why is this mounted both on the sides and here? Ooh, there is some funky thing in here that is hanging in. Look at that vibration thingy. Ooh, what is the idea? Anti vibration thingy. Interesting. Is this the transformator? But then. Why is it so... Oh, somebody was supposed to unscrew this when they were going to use it, so this is only a transport screw, right? Because of course it's gonna... Look! Bendy Bendy, it's sitting in some flexible... Super nice! But it was never released! That is not right! <laughs> this must be the transformator, I guess. Because I don't see it anywhere. I'm gonna see if we can get in. See? Yeah. So that would be the tubes here. Great! So, this is the unit from the bottom. And here is this fantastic flexible mounting of some super secret module whatever that is doing but look down here is the main transformator so that means this is something else and what exactly is it doing so it goes to some 10k resistors and some I really don't know. Maybe we should go and find a schematic. But I'm so much into looking inside this module. Is this connectors? No. Oh, so I need to desolder all these wires to get in there. And it looks like it's sealed or screwed together somehow. Is it possible for us to have a why? Oh, see? What is inside? That is very interesting. So those wires... They go to this PCB. And again... Where... What the heck is that? <laughs> This is really interesting. Well, well, I need to go and look this up because now I want to know what it is. No, this is the power supply. So here we got some voltage regulator tubes. And this will be... Okay, so this is the power supply. And it's most likely connected to the mains transformator somehow. Well, that is actually pretty cool. What have we got up here? Why is there a piece of cardboard on top of something that can go warm? Is this how you create a fire? Cool. 
I just couldn't have it. See, with proper markings, it's possible to get back quite easy. But look at that sexy box. What is inside this one? Hmm. And it's quite heavy. I'm going to open this one, huh? Wouldn't you just agree? It's more fun if we open this together, right? Ooh, what the? What? What on earth is this thing? Holy macaroni. This looks like a speaker of some sort. Yeah, there's a voice coil. Can no. This one can move back and forward, right? See? So that would be contacts. So it's, so it's, so it's just a relay or something. Is this really just a relay? Then I must say, it is the most beautiful relay I have ever seen. But it totally looks like a relay. <laughs> I got to measure what is going on here. But I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. There's definitely a like a coil. Here. So this is supposed to be moving. So this is something. I don't know yet what it is. But you guys gotta see this. This one just goes up here. It will be the sensor tab. So that means you can, with a positive and two negatives, you can pull it both ways, right? And this is a magnet. Right? And this looks like half of like a loudspeaker. And then it goes out here. It's connected to these two. And look how crazy stable it's made. They even cut it here. So there's no thermal expansion in the whole unit. It's all done correctly. And then you can carefully adjust just the tiniest little movement will make a contact and of course this one is supposed to be really really clean and good so there's a rubber gasket all the way around really a really a beautiful unit wow that was really really a find and it, it is not really explained in the schematic it just looks like a relay Maybe I'll see if I can show you guys a snip of the schematic. And yes, I was right. This thing is just a relay. See, if I measure those two contacts, where's the contact? And if I just barely touch this, move it, see, disconnect. And then I move the other two, or connect the other two, and there's no contact. 
It's difficult to get connect connection. Okay, then move. Ah, come on, man. But this is how it was. Let's let's see if I can go in the beep beep mode. Yeah, see. Okay, so is there a connection between the two other contacts to each other when I go through the the point? That, that means is it make before break? Is that what it's doing? Yes, it is, of course. So, haha, there's also a center point. <laughs> How cool is that? A relay that makes before it breaks. That is exactly what this one can do. <laughs> because look at the way the contacts go down there, right? So, yes, of course, this can make before break. Very, very special. Relay. So I'm trying to add a little bit of DC voltage. Each side of the coil is about 1.7 kilo ohms. So at 13 volts, there's nothing. 14, yes, see? 14 volts and back to 13. 14, 13. And, like you see here, so that's the 13 volts where there's no contact, and that is 14 volts with the contact. And I've been writing down on this unit exactly what it are all the different connections. So that means I will be easy, it will be easy for me to measure what is going on when I mount this again here. So this is the switch. Ooh, I can really feel it's magnetic. <laughs> cool. So the yellow is the center of the switch and the center of the coil is the green one. All right, and blue and brown that's the other ends of the coils so that means i will be able to mount this now and measure what is going on so now everything is back assembled i've been reading a little bit in the schematic and the coil center voltage should be 65 volts and that is correct and this is the one side of the coil and look at that we got 10 volts of peak peak or 10 volts per division right so those are that will be the 14 13 volts peak peak right so this will be the voltage required to to swing this relay and it is running at 75 hertz and the Description said something about about 70 Hertz. So now I will input a DC voltage of very weak DC voltage into the probe and then I will see if the switch generates this pulsed voltage for the amplifier system. Also, listen careful. What if I touch this? It is possible to hear this now, right? But all the vibrations, they kind of go away from the frame. But if you feel this, you can clearly feel that it's working. And this is moving in this direction. And again, look, this is mounted, this springy mount in the direction of movement. So dampening all the vibrations really good this is the calibration output about one kilohertz sine wave and see the output follows 
the settings for level here. However, I haven't yet figured out what you use this one kilohertz. Maybe this is just a generator for whatever kind of circuit you are messing around with. But because this one kilohertz is a sine wave and this meter cannot measure one kilohertz sine wave. So what is the idea about this calibration? I would call it just a signal generator, I guess. Uh, hmm. Well, we will see about that. So I found a way to adjust the chopper. So I'm inputting a little bit of millivolts directly into the input. And I'm measuring the output after the chopper. Of course, there's a little bit of noise in the circuit and, and so on. And then I found a drill that fits inside the adjustment screws. And by trimming those two, you can see the difference. If I do it like this, you can see the... See? Now there's a connection. See, now this one is the bottom. So I can adjust how wide is the holes at the bottom and of course they also they affect each other a little bit because there's a mechanical system here and if I adjust the other one it's more the top one so I try to adjust for the for the best margins and now the fun thing is the thing is actually working so if I crank down the input, whoops, see, that is zero. It is so sensitive. So I should, of course, there's the biggest problem is actually also the switch. So let me give it a little bit of input. Let's see if I can find a A position where I got a decent yeah see so this is me dialing up the input ta 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 ta, -ta. it is now working <laughs> yeah, great all we needed was to adjust this mechanical chopper circuit and all the amplifiers and stuff is actually working and here is the oscillator board with the EF86 driving the chopper oscillator and for the calibration oscillator we got a E80C E88CC look at that one Special quality with gold pins. Isn't that just nice? And for the oscillation level, uh, we got a dual diode. Really, really cute. Tiny little dual diode. One last video of the power supply board, rectifier diodes and voltage regulator tubes they're right there and the voltage regulator here as well and the amplifier board i think we can maybe get a really good picture of it here with the two ef86 really really nice actually thanks a lot to radiomuseum.org for the schematic and please go there if you want the schematic in a higher resolution I just wanted to show um, a little bit how this works. So this is the input diode detector and this is what I showed. You can unscrew 
the tip and get access to the capacitor. This is the diode that generates uh, a DC voltage. And this is of course uh, done as local as possible to the RF frequencies or the high frequencies uh, you want to measure. Then there is a, a DC input attenuator. And then the DC voltage is filtered. And here is this fantastic relay, or should, I, should we call it a chopper? So uh, this converts the DC voltage into an AC voltage that is amplified. And now it is amplified using all those tubes, as you see here. So first it's just uh, a lot of gain, but then here is uh, some more gain and an attenuator and more gain and look what we got here we got global feedback but we also got a local feedback so there's a, 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 a two different uh, feedback systems and uh, the AC voltage from the last uh, amplifier is then rectified via four diodes and drives the meter but the current, see, this is the current feedback from this. So this is actually a current output that goes back here. So we have a constant current generator, really, really cool made. So, and this is of course very, very accurate and stable because it's working on AC. Don't you just love it? Let's look a little bit uh, on the schematic here. So this is the oscillator that is used for the chopper. The thing uh, about this oscillator is that uh, it is running at uh, sinus, uh, about 70 hertz. Here is another sine wave uh, oscillator. It is uh, made a lot more uh, nice and accurate and it's using these two tubes for the oscillator and here is the delay line or the filter for the frequency and uh, here it is rectifying the output and this is used to control the amplitude so this is the the double diode tube that i was uh, talking about really tiny cute double diode and this 1.1 kilohertz uh, sine wave it uh, also goes to the same attenuator uh, or another um, section of the of the dial or the attenuator. So the output follows the settings. I still haven't understood exactly what you need to or wh why why is this output really there? What is it good for and uh, what what are you using this for? Because they call it calibration. But this meter cannot measure this uh, this sine wave at all, no matter what you do. So I don't get it. <laughs> and this is the power supply. Really, really uh, a nice uh, regulated um, power supply using tubes. It is really, uh, yeah, <laughs> really nicely made <laughs> with voltage uh, regulators, tubes, and the feedback and everything here. So yeah, that is uh, that is great, and uh, there's a, a voltage here that is at, uh, just plus minus uh, a few millivolts. I think it's like two or three uh, millivolts that you can uh, adjust this uh, voltage, and this A point goes up to this point, and is fed into the DC input, and that is of course to zero the DC input. Pretty cool. Alright, thank you.